This is the Wealthy Wednesday Radio Show with your host, Lucy McMonagle, a money manifester, coach, and public speaker who's on a mission to helping you create more wealth in your life and business. This show will inspire and empower you with various topics and has expert guests. Let's welcome your host, Lucy McMonagle. Welcome to the Wealthy Wednesday Radio Show. This is your host, Lucy McMonagle, and I am so grateful you're listening today. Thank you for deciding to be here today. I am so excited. We have such an incredible, incredible guest. Her name is Christina Jandali, and she is absolutely amazing. She's the founder of Deliver Your Genius, and she's also a business growth strategist. She works with coaches, consultants, and other service-based entrepreneurs who are the center of their brand. She's best known for her results-oriented strategies that generate momentum, shift mindsets, build confidence, visibility, and increase her clients' bottom line. She's on a mission to empower women to unleash their power, differentiate themselves in the marketplace, and turn their business dreams into a reality. Welcome to the show, Christina. Hi, Lucy. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to be here today. Oh, I'm so excited. I'm so honored that you've taken time out of your schedule so that you can really help women unleash their power for the Wealthy Wednesday radio show. Um, I've been so blessed with with you being able to contact me and, and be here. I would really, really like to ask a few questions and and you know have our audience really get to know you and what what exactly you do and, and how you truly unleash the power in women. Sounds fantastic. I love it. Let's get started. Fabulous. So I've heard you say the phrase, love what you do, get paid what you're worth, and still have time for the rest of your life. So where does that come from? Yes, Lucy, that is definitely a phrase that I live by. And for me, it started a while ago. I was um, in a corporate job, and I would say I was stuck in a corporate, (laughs) cushy corporate job, and I knew that I was meant for more, but I made family my priority, so I pushed aside my desires for more, and the truth was I was probably afraid of really going for it. You know, what if I failed? What would people say? You know, can I really do this? But I wasn't happy, and I was really waiting for some day to come. I was waiting, you know, I wasn't sure exactly what that was, maybe to be discovered, to be able to have the life that I wanted. Um, You know, it wasn't until after having my first child where I knew that I wanted to set an example for my daughter and really pave the way of possibility for her. I grew up with this belief that your passion, you know, doesn't pay the bills. And um, so it took me a while to overcome that. And when I was off on maternity leave, I had some colleagues at the time ask me to do some consulting work for them. And uh, I did it, and I just loved it, noticing the difference that I was making in their businesses, and I was hooked. So I decided um, to launch a business, but I, I kind of went through a period where I struggled selling myself. It felt so personal. And I struggled uh, to know where I really added the most value and how I could differentiate myself in the marketplace. And, and not only that, I found it hard to balance growing a business with having a baby, a toddler, a husband, and all these other responsibilities in my life. So I eventually chose to invest in a mentor. And when I did, everything really changed for me. My business started to come together. And I remember reading Sheryl Sandberg's book, uh, and her mentioning the lean in, and she was talking about you can't have it all, that something has to give, and that really stirred a fire within me to prove her wrong, because I do believe that you can have it all, and the trouble is that most people aren't clear enough to know um, on what it is that they truly want to be able to have all of what they want, so women tend to you know, des- deny their desires, they make it wrong, 
they um, they think it's maybe uh, they don't give themselves permission to buy maybe material things that they want like um, certain clothes, designer purses or shoes or going out to you know fancy fancy you know five course dinners or traveling or just those freedoms that they want they don't really give themselves permission to have it and what happens is those internal money stories keep you from having what it is that you truly want and the truth is that money um, the, the truth is really money is what creates freedom and it's what allows you to have a bigger impact on the world so you know going back to your question that phrase to me really emphasizes what is really possible you can have it all that you desire but first you just must know what that is exactly exactly and it is really really important to to be very crystal clear on on what precisely you desire in order for you to really go for it because if you if you have kind of like um i'm not sure what you kind of want you sort of sort of kind of know what you want it's really hard to drive that compass in that one particular direction and that sounds like we're both um, experiencing the same thing where you can truly have it all and when you have money you can make the impact on the world that you desire exactly exactly what you're saying too that there's there's not really that place for the um, you know if you want to truly be successful in your business and your life and have what you desire there's there's not really that place to have the the wishy-washy maybe this maybe that you, you need to really tune in and and listen to your um, you know listen to what those whispers are for you and what it is that you truly desire exactly so that kind of brings us directly to uh, another question that I'm 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 you know how exactly do people figure out what do they want great question so and I guess that kind of comes down to you know what does success look like for you and and sometimes it's, hard, it's really hard for people and it, it seems like it would be something that's so simple but it's really hard for people to have a clear understanding of what that is and I find sometimes it's easier to figure out what it is that you don't want first <laughs> start you know start on the opposite side and somehow it's much easier for people to list off all the things that they know that they don't want to have and then it's easier to look at that list and be able to create um, a list that's like the opposite <laughs> of what it is that you don't want and for those of you that really like the idea of, um, of dreaming or thinking about what other people have sometimes it's good to take a look at you know, who is it in your industry or who is it of um, you know mentors or people that you've looked up to in your industry that you're perhaps maybe a little bit envious or jealous about or that you wish that you could have what they have one of my mentors once taught me that jealousy is the sign of what it is that you truly desire and that really hit home to me because I remember looking at other people's stories and thinking you know everyone's heard these um, you know zero to a hundred stories of, of going from nothing to you know creating everything in their business and being super successful and it almost seems like this is this overnight story and they have all you know they've um, impacted the world and they've made changes and they're helping people on a grand scale and so when you're looking at these people and you think you know why not me think about um, think about what it is that they have that you would like and that's a great place to be able to start and start thinking that if they've done it then you know that it's possible for you think about who's in your industry that you admire why is it that you admire them what does he or she have that you want and just be honest don't make it wrong just really be honest with what that is and knowing that it's possible for you think the first time that um, I think it was Roger Bannister that did the first four minute mile and for him, it seemed like to most people that was, um, that was something that wasn't possible. It hadn't been done yet. And yet when he finally made the mark on having that four-minute mile, it, it, that record has since been broken many times because now people knew it was possible. And if they knew that if he could do it, it was possible that they could do it too. So use that as the fuel of knowing um, not only what you want, but knowing that it's possible for you and think, you know, if you could wave a realistic magic wand on your life and your business, what would it look like? And it allows you to dream a little bit. And that's one of the questions that I often ask clients when I work with them is, you know, if they could wave that um, realistic magic wand, say from, you know, one year from today, 
on a specific date, what would it look like? What would have had to have happened for it to feel like it was their best year ever? That's a really, really important question is, is looking back. It will look into the future and looking back on what would have to happen for you to feel successful, for you to feel happy, for you to feel accomplished, and and really focusing on, you know, being honest with yourself where you're at right now and what qualities that other people that you you notice or maybe even you're feeling a little jealous about, what qualities do they have that you can start strengthening within yourself? And, you know, I feel that that's so incredible that that's an easy way to figure out how to decide what you want and also using the starting point of listing what you don't want first so at least you have some place to start. I like that. That's really incredible. So I would like to know, um, I've, I've heard you talk about the differences between masculine and feminine structures, but I, I really couldn't quite understand how exactly this is put together. Could you explain that more in depth for me? Definitely, Lucy. And I, and I know it's an interesting question um, because sometimes we may feel, <laughs> just from the sounds of it, masculine and feminine, that there's um, not everybody has a clear understanding of what that really means, the different, the different elements um, to both masculine and feminine. So first off, with masculine um, side of things, is where I really spent much of my career I was in a male-dominated industry. I spent 15 years working in financial services, and um, and it was definitely <laughs> male-dominated. It was all about competition, structure, planning, winning, um, and and you know some of those elements are definitely important. And having structure is definitely important. I believe that structure is important for a foundation of your business. But I don't believe in competition personally. And it's taken me a while to actually say that because <laughs> being in that environment, I was very competitive. And I've come to realize in the last several years that, that nobody has to lose for you to be able to win. And there's really so much, there's more than enough to go around um, for what it is that you want. There's more clients, there's more money, there's, um, you know, win-win situations are really the way to go. And this is a block that I often see come up with, um, you know, with clients is that they may feel that there's not enough to go around or there might be, they might be missing the ship or they might not be getting in on time or there's only a certain collection of, of clients that are the right clients for them. And if somebody else lands a client, um, that fits perhaps their ideal client, and it's taking away from them. And that's really, that's really not the case. Um, but that tends to be more that masculine approach. And then on the other hand, with so much women empowerment today, and women living in sort of this man's world, and being, um, you know, raising the bar for where they're at, women sometimes have lost sight of their feminine side. And, and granted, on the flip side, too, men have become a bit more feminine um, with their ways as well. So, you know, the yin and the yang, both sides of it. But the feminine side is really the letting go. It's the creative side. Uh, it's um, not worrying so much of the how, focusing on what it is, you know, what it is that you want to create and letting go of the how, being open to what may come in front of you. I always su say success presents itself in the form of opportunities and it's being open to that flow, being open to receive. And I, and, and I must admit, I've been, um, I've had a challenge with this and it tends to come up with a lot of transformational leaders as well, is, is women that struggle with receiving. They want, they're givers by nature. They want to give, they want to um, have an impact, they want to help others. They have this strong urge to do that. And, you know, they might not be comfortable with receiving. And receiving can be simple things, you know, even as how you accept a compliment. And, and do you take it and appreciate it or do you get uncomfortable and sort of push it aside or feel like you need to compliment in return? And that's kind of a softer way of taking a look at um, if you're open to receiving or not. And, you know, on the other side, with feminine energy, it's passion, it's connection, it's heart. It's all of the, um, the, the softer side of things. And definitely with building a business, you need to have both the structures, 
but all too often I find that people shift the scales into one, um, one energy significantly heavier than the other, and it creates a little bit of a block for them. So it's really important to have both sides and to be open to when things are coming up so that you have that ability to, um, to connect with both the masculine and feminine. Does that make sense? That makes perfect sense. It makes perfect sense, exactly. And, you know, women, the women I work with and the women that I know personally, they, we are givers. We, we, by nature, you know, if a lot of us, if you ask us what does our partner want or what does our husband want or what does our children want, we, we can tell you exactly what they want. And we, we sometimes forget that with giving in them everything that they desire and they want, you know, receiving something simple as, as a compliment or receiving a little gift, it, it, sometimes it's really, really hard to receive because they're always, they're used to um, giving more than receiving. And that's so true for, for many of us. And it really kind of goes back to helping people figure out what they, they want is by, you know, maybe stepping back and looking at okay, as a, as a feminine, and I'm always giving, and I can tell you exactly what other people want, maybe I can pretend I'm somebody else looking at me and telling me what I want. And then that that can be helpful for them for, for kind of navigating the success road to figuring out how to balance the masculine and how to balance the feminine and moving forward. Definitely. It's a good point that you made, too, is, it's funny how it's easier to come up with, you know, what your family or your friends or your loved ones and what they want, <laughs> and and how isn't that strange that um, and it's very true though that we're so in tune to um, you know the desires of other people, and um, and sometimes we can get lost in that trap of you know wanting to make other people happy, or you know self sacrifice you know, sacrificing yourself to be able to make other people happy. And the truth is, the more full you are um, yourself in your own life, the better equipped you are and able to be able to help other people and to fill them up. Exactly, because when, when your cup is running over, you can fill up other people's cup without being exhausted, without being depleted, and without feeling the resentment at the end of the day. Absolutely. That's very true, and it's nice to have that. <laughs> it's nice to think of that as a metaphor too, and and have a check in with yourself, um, you know, throughout the days, or you know, when when <laughs> when you're running your business and you're busy and you're you know might feel a little bit overwhelmed, is checking in to see where you're at and and how full your cup is, and to know too to be able to know what you can do, what what lights you up, what excites you, what rejuvenates you, or recharges you, so that you are able to um, to fill yourself back up and to be able to know what your your go-to things. I think it was Tony Robbins that I heard before saying that he came up with a list of 100 different ways that he could sort of flip the switch <laughs> if he was in a negative um frame of mind, negative space, to be able to be happy. So he came up with a list of a hundred different things that he could do to um, to get in that positive space. <laughs> so it's a fun activity to try out. That That is really a fun activity to try out. A hundred different ways on how you can become positive when things aren't going the way you you thought they should. Yep. That's a good one. I, I actually have exercises on a hundred different ways on creating wealth, but I'm I'm I think I might add that to a hundred different ways to make yourself happy. Um, you mentioned just a little bit ago that you need to check in with yourself to see where you're at. Do you have a certain technique that you use for helping people to check in with themselves, or how do you how do you explain that to a client to check in with herself? That's a great question. Um, so I find that just getting um, having check-ins with yourself in the sense of really just getting present in the moment. So often we get um, 
carried away with the doing. <laughs> there's always the doing. There's always busy work. There's always stuff that's on the go. Um, you know, our minds get drifted off into, you know, what it is that we're working towards and what we're creating. And sometimes that takes us out of just being in the moment, being in that present, um, the present time, to have a, a check into where you're at. I, um, I've definitely been a student of Eckhart Tolle, so really having that, um, you know, that moment where you can just stop and take a step back from whatever it is that you're doing, check in to see, um, you know, almost like outside, outside of yourself and just check in to see what it is that you're feeling because the, the truth is that, you know, emotions are, are we, what we choose to, we can choose to change our emotions and, and oftentimes people think that emotions are just, just a reaction to something but it, it's a combination of you know, the meaning you're giving behind a certain circumstance. An example I like to give sometimes too is if, if somebody has credit card debt and they take a look at it and they say, you know, I have $10,000 of credit card debt and they're beating themselves up over it and they feel guilty and, um, and it's just a, a whole swing of negative emotions. When you really take a moment to just check in and just to take a look at the facts and eliminate the meaning behind it and eliminate any of the um, um, any of the feelings that are associated with that and just recognize it saying yeah you know this is ten thousand dollars of credit card debt so now I'm open to take a look at solutions and and it just gives you an opportunity to be able to reflect in an objective way rather than just taking um, t- taking your feelings as truth and really just digging a little bit deeper to see where what's really coming up and what the truth is, what what really happened, what's the situation. So doing that with your, you know, emotions during the day to see where you're at and um, and just taking that opportunity to step back. Exactly, and that's really crucial for us to actually just stop and as as women and being busy and and looking at trying to balance our family, balance our business, balance our mission, balance helping other people, balancing, you know, being with our friends, just taking a moment, just taking those few moments to really, really stop and and look at what exactly are you feeling. And, you know, feelings are not always the truth. Feelings can come up with negative thoughts. And, you know, really eliminating the emotion that you're attached to. When you remove the attachment, you're setting yourself free so you can find the solutions. And so you can find ways to look at the situation in a different manner that's in a different perception. Absolutely. And, and you know, it's, it's great talking about this, too, because it, it doesn't matter who you are or how, how um, far along the road you are in regards to know business development or how much success you've created every single person out there um, has uh, falls into this trap it's just a matter of when you build that awareness how quickly you can sort of recognize it and and get out of it and like you were saying too is is being able to come up with the solutions exactly exactly so we're going to honor our sponsors and we will be right back shortly so I will be back in a moment The It's Your Turn Radio Show with Denise Dominguez is on every Thursday at 6 p.m. Eastern. Join Denise Dominguez, an empowerment and relationship coach, as she invites experts on for interviews and how they help women with their knowledge and expertise to break through that stuck space you're in. You'll learn tools and techniques to move forward in life with confidence and clarity that Denise will share with you. Listen every Thursday at 6 p.m. Eastern by going to blogtalkradio.com slash yourownuniversityradio.com. The It's Your Turn Radio Show with Denise Dominguez. From the best-selling author of From Bondage to Happiness, Antika Lisha will personally walk you through her new program featuring her radical forgiveness, Freedom Formula. This is for you if you are ready to once and for all be released from the chains of past abuse and take your power back. Radical Forgiveness is a five-week step-by-step system to release the chains of a traumatic past trapping in fear, reactivity, and stress and gently free you, allowing you to take your power back and claim your beautiful life. 
Get instant access to your first video and a free 60-minute discovery session with Antica herself, a $250 value at AnticaLibby.com slash Radical Forgiveness. Be you to the fullest. That's beautiful. And it is the secret to living your life on purpose. But so many people suffer not knowing who they are and what they are here for because of the ongoing influences shooting all over us. Are you ready to break free, take back your power, and discover exactly what makes you, you? Your own university is the number one online self-awareness community, here to help you confidently know yourself and step into your ideal life. Our directory is full of highly qualified personal coaches that have helped over 100,000 women from all over the world transform their lives inside and out. Come fall in love with yourself and discover true fulfillment at yourownuniversity.com. Lucy McMonical is a money manifester coach and public speaker, and it's her passion to educate others how to manifest more money. She is on a mission to inspire and empower you with her Wealthy Wednesday e-zine and radio show. Visit her website at L-U-C-I-M-C-M-O-N-A-D-L-E dot com for resources, tips, and your free gift. That's LucyMcMonagle.com. Welcome back to the Wealthy Wednesday Radio Show. This is your host, Lucy McMonagle, and I'm so excited you're with us today. Thank you for listening in. We have a phenomenal guest today. Her name is Christina Jandela Deli. And we were talking earlier about how people can really stop and notice what you're feeling and, and eliminating your attachment, your emotional attachment to situations so that you can find solutions. And I would like to welcome Christina back to the show. Thanks, Lucy. Absolutely. So I'd like to continue a little bit more on, on, you know, having people, you know, stop and feel what they're feeling, but also what, what exactly stops people from acquiring the wealth that they desire? The, the million dollar question. <laughs> yes, the million dollar question. Maybe two million if you're really good. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so what stops people from acquiring wealth? That's, uh, yeah, that's definitely a big question. So false beliefs, I would say, um, is a huge thing that really stops people from acquiring wealth. You know, those beliefs that it's not meant for you or there's, you know, what we were talking about earlier, there's not enough for everyone or perhaps those that have, um, that might be religious, they don't feel that it's, um, in line with their beliefs or that you need to hurry to make money or it's a struggle or, um, you know, that you can live in sort of um, this poverty mindset of, you know, watching all your pennies and being very cautious of any spending and always trying to find the next bargain. And all of those beliefs are really blocking you from acquiring wealth. I always encourage my clients to go back and take a look at their money story. And, um, you know, what happens is, is when we're growing up, up to the point where we're about seven or eight years old, all of what we've um, taken in up until that point has been considered truth. It's what we've accepted as truth. So there's, you know, experiences that, that we've had, what we learned. So if you can ask yourself these questions is, you know, what did you learn from your parents about money? What did you learn from your father and from your mother about money. And what you learned from them may be different from what they said to you. How did they talk to you about money or did they not talk to you about money? What did you observe? What about your you know, grandparents? What did you see? Was it you know, fighting about money? Was there guilt about spending? Was there beliefs about what money should be spent on and what it shouldn't be spent on? I think this is a big one for people. Often we have this acceptance of being able to splurge on certain things but not others. Um, and, and, you know, what were your first experiences? 
And you know, it's really it's really getting clear as to what those are and not taking them as truth and how we were talking about about before about having that check in, really checking in and asking yourself, is this truth? And most often times is you can take a look and you can find so many different inspirational stories of people that um, that went from you know nothing to to creating a lot of wealth, and yet there's um, it, they, they've overcome certain beliefs or they've had this expectation of what it can be. So really going back and observing what it was that you learned as a child and, and acknowledging or recognizing that it's not your story and choose to um, create your own story by the inspirational stories that are around you. And, you know, some people say that they they know what their money story is, but um, I'm <laughs> I'm going to come right out and say that if your bank account doesn't reflect it, if you're not generating the income that you want, then you don't know it. And it's, you know, be conscious and, um, and accept what, what beliefs are true and, and that are um, a compelling way of being able to see or think about wealth creation and reject your or, or create um, new ones that, that are more empowering on what it is that you want. So, you know, why do you not have more right now? What comes up for you when you ask that question? You know, why you don't have more money right now? And underneath the people and the situations, just think about what is it and own what that is. What are you, you know, what is it that you might be afraid of? And, all, you know, people always move away from pain. So if you have pain associated with wealth and abundance, you will move away from it. And a big thing that comes up for people is often, you know, talk about fear of having fear of success and what you might have to give up or would you have to change friends or would, um, you know, what would change in your life if you had that? Would, would it mean that you have less time? And does it really mean that you need to spend more time to create wealth? And so it's almost like this circle that goes around and until you take a moment to step out of that and and take a look in on what that is. And oftentimes people think, um, you know, that, you know, they need more experience before they can get started with launching their business or up-leveling their business to get to the next phase. But really it's about courage and just getting rid of the excuses and step into a, a accountability. Uh, you know, take 100% responsibility for where you're at, what's happened. It's not it's not anybody else's um, fault. There's nothing else, you know, don't don't hold blame on anybody just stop right where you are right now take full accountability and um, and then you can move forward and, and move towards what it is that you've um, decided that you want based on what we were talking about earlier exactly exactly one of the hardest things is is to not blame it on your childhood or not to blame it on your parents or you know expecting your parents they should have directed you better they should have and your parents couldn't have directed you any better than what they were directed if they don't have the knowledge, if they don't have the skills or the abilities, and if they weren't ever positioned for success or groomed for success, they certainly couldn't do it for you. Absolutely. That's, that's such a great point there. And, um, yes, I know we we're talking about kind of going back on where these stories came from, but it's just to unearth what it is that's there and, and um, like you're saying, Lucy, definitely that's it's there's you know there's no place for for blame and and it you know it doesn't take years to build wealth. Um, it doesn't. It, it can take years, but it, I mean it doesn't. It doesn't take decades. It's not going to take a lifetime to be able to build wealth. It can happen very very quickly when you have the right tools and structures in place to be able to create that. Exactly, exactly. And, you know, really, if you have the right tools and the structures, you it, making a million within three years is, is extremely easy when, when, you, when you have those structures in place, when you have those tools in place, when you have a strategy plan. And, you know, speaking about strategies, and because you're a business girl strategist, now how do you think that your background in finance helps you as a business girl strategist? And, and does everybody have to have a background in finance in order to become successful in a business? 
Great question. Um, and no, not everybody needs to have that, that background in finance at all. Um, what I found probably the most helpful for me in having that background is it really opened up my awareness to possibility. I remember when I first started um, working in finance, I started in an administrative position and I really started at the bottom and worked my way up. But I remember it was maybe I was a week on the job and I was preparing some statements for um, the advisor that I was working with and I was going through and preparing the, all these documents and I remember looking down at this statement and I was blown away. I had to count the zeros <laughs> and count them again. And um, this particular portfolio had just over $12 million of assets in, in, in this account. And to me at that time, that just seemed so far out of the norm of what could be possible. And I remember just staring at it for a minute, thinking, wow, you know, and kind of dreaming, like, what would life be like if you had that much money? And you know, got really curious, where did these people come up with this money? And, and the more that I started working with different clients and, um, and really building a business in that world of finance, I started to realize that these affluent people were just, they're just normal people. They were um, normal people with normal lives. Many of them didn't go and um, live lavish lifestyles. Some certainly did. But everybody was different, but they were just normal people. And I think that that really shifted one of my old beliefs of thinking that sometimes that wealth came to people because perhaps they weren't as nice or they took it away from somebody else to have it. And so I think that my time, especially the earlier years in finance, it really helped me kind of change my money story and, and realize what could be possible. I remember seeing $50,000 turn into a million dollars in the span of a few months. And on the flip side, I saw millions of dollars dissolve overnight when we had, um, had the tech crash and then the um, stock market crash in 2008. And so I've seen things go from nothing to huge amounts and, and large sums of money dissolve. But those people with a healthy wealth consciousness, they bounce back. And that's what really fascinated me, as they recreated their money. And I know for me in my own life that I was a self-made millionaire by the time I was 26. And following that, I actually did go through a, um, you know, a split and the market crashed and I lost most of it. But I was able to rebuild it, and I started to realize that it's built on principles and it's built on structures. And those people that expect losses seem to keep having them. There was always clients that you know that were negative about money and expected to lose, and it would just keep perpetuating. And then there was clients that you just they, nothing could ever go wrong for them. And I started to realize it's more than just you know it's definitely the tactical side of things, but there's more than just that. It's the it's your mindset and your wealth consciousness, and you know, they're looking on both sides of that really helped me realize the importance of that wealth consciousness. And the more I observed this, the more I realized there really was a science behind this. And if you, you know, want to get to a place that you've never been before, if you haven't created that wealth before, then you don't necessarily know how to get there. And you do need to relinquish control, let go of, um, you know, your ego, we all do have an ego, <laughs> let go of needing to, be, you know, I would, and I refer to ego in the sense of needing to know how to get there and needing to know that you have this, you know, step-by-step -step plan and, uh, and really just upgrading your wealth consciousness and creating a new um, default system for yourself so that you have this ability to create this wealth. And it can happen very, very quickly. And like you were talking about, you know, within a few years, you can, um, you, you know, you can create wealth and you can create um, you know millions and you can have that and it's if if other people are doing it if you've heard other stories of somebody doing it then know that that's possible for you too when you choose to um, invest in yourself and you choose to um, you know follow suit with what other people are doing there's i think that's one of the biggest things is don't you know, we want to be creative, and as entrepreneurs, we like coming up with new ideas. But it's important also to um, to not reinvent the wheel and and find proven business models that work. 
rather than trying to recreate something from scratch. You can always, you know, make things better and there's room to be creative in what it is that you're putting out and the way that you deliver your message and all that is available to you, but the, the actual systems that you use, um, take a proven business model and, and use that as your framework so that you can create that wealth. Exactly, and that's so true and, you know, myself also being a self-made millionaire and losing well over half of it um, not once but twice <laughs> you it's true you really can rebuild it back and it's it's not so much what you do it's your mindset it's your belief system and it's really getting to the core on on moving forward and but having the business structures that have are time tested you know for for moving you forward and with the internet and technology these days there's so many different time tested structures and strategies that that you could use to build your business in accordance to your authentic self in accordance to what your belief systems are provided you've changed your belief systems to the fact that there's more than enough for everyone and you know you don't have to lose yourself in order to become successful and looking at all of the the different false belief systems that you've had and you know that kind of brings me to another question how does somebody determine if they have a false belief system or not I mean how do they know is this a false belief system or is this a real belief system is this based on truth that's a great question. And, and I think that we all have a knowing within ourselves to know um, when things come up, if we believe them to be true. Sometimes it's helpful to have an objective person to be able to go through and help unearth what these, these beliefs are and to help transform them to get that you know, new operating system. But really, it's, it's first is getting it out of your head, you know, writing down all those thoughts that come to mind, all those beliefs that you have, um, that we, they tend to be these loops within our minds of all of these different thoughts that keep coming through. And until you actually take a moment to step back and to write it out, and even just to do this for a day or two, is write down all the thoughts that are coming into your mind um, and just kind of get it out. And then once you have it on paper, somehow it changes things. Just thinking about something only gets you so far, but when you have the opportunity to take a look at what those are and take a look at them on paper and ask yourself, you know, are these within your control and letting go of, of course, the things that are outside of your control. But whether, you know, it's truth or whether it's a false belief, asking yourself and getting curious where those beliefs came from. What come, you know, where did it originate from? Where did you first feel that way? Or what, you know, what was your first experience with money? And, and recognizing the experiences that you had that associated with those beliefs will really help you determine if there's truth to it or if it's somebody else's story. And like I said, too, having um, working with a coach is definitely very helpful to be able to go through and discover what those are and to have that objective perspective to be able to shine a light of awareness on um, you know, what is possible or what's not possible. Oftentimes, you know, false belief that many people have are that they need to have, you know, if they're not born into money or they don't have the capacity for the resources that they have or you know, they don't have enough education, there's always something that they, you know, that next step that they need to get to before they're able to, to enjoy and create that wealth and success in their business. And, um, and, you know, always thinking of what, <laughs> what that is, is, is definitely a false belief because you can Google, you know, the self-made billionaires of, you know, college dropouts, and I'm not suggesting that you drop out of college, but, but just to give some perspective, I mean, Mark Zuckerberg is an example, is that you don't need to, to have all that in place before you can create that. It just comes up with, you know, a fresh idea, a new perspective, and that wealth consciousness to be able to, um, to get yourself to that, um, to be open to, to replacing those old beliefs. Does that make sense, Lucy, though, going through it that way? That makes perfect sense. And, and actually, you can get to any belief system, whether it's with wealth, whether it's with money, relationships, 
in, in any other area simply by writing it down. And, and it, it's so true that when you write things down, when you write it out, it's it just it takes on a whole new meaning. It You can see it more clearly for some reason. And looking at it compared to thinking about it is, is, is the difference between night and day. And that's really a powerful, powerful tool. Just doing that alone is is really setting yourself up for success because you're ready to be truly honest with yourself on what's going on in your head, what's really rolling around up there. And, and is it serving you or is it disserving you? Absolutely. I love that thing, ready, ready to be honest with yourself. <laughs> and, you know, it's funny because you would think that's just, you know, assumed to be the case, but we tell ourselves a lot of different stories <laughs> that that keep us from um, from following our hearts and and pursuing, um, you know, our dreams and doing things that are really in line with you. Because you can um, you can create all that you want that's totally in line with your own unique brilliance, and and that's one of the th- topics that I'm extremely passionate about. Is really helping people uncover what that unique um, brilliance is, their unique genius, which I like to call it, and and building a profitable business around that, around who they are. You don't need to be somebody else to um, to create that. You can be more of you, like Sally Sally Hogshead. I don't know if you've or if you're familiar with her, but um, but she used to do um, marketing, and she has a book out, How the World Sees You, and it all, it talks about different personality types and and being more of you is really what helps you stand out from the crowd and to be unique and deliver your message in your your own unique way exactly exactly that's really important to be your own unique way but really discovering what that unique self is by removing other people's belief systems and other people's stories out of your story so that you have room for you um you have a free gift if I am for our audience, that's specifically for them. Could you tell us a little bit more about that, and how can people contact you personally if they would love to have their unique abilities um, drawn out of them, and how can they deliver their own genius through you? Absolutely, yes, I do have a free gift. It's brand new. And it's a three-part audio series about turning your business dreams into reality and what it, does it really take. And what we were talking about earlier is for myself, after studying the difference between those who um, make it and those who don't because, you know, they eventually give up, I realized that it really boils down to ten things. And so in this audio series, I'm sharing what those 10 things are and how you can use them to your advantage in, in, um, in your own business by listening through the audio. So it's a three-part series. The first audio is just about talking about gaining clarity and focus. The second audio is about those success principles that we were talking about. And then the third one is five steps to getting clients. So it's kind of the, um, the tactical along with some of the mindset because I believe that they go both hand in hand. And for me, after spending you know 15 years in the top finance firm in Canada and struggling to get my own business started at the beginning and then managing to replace my cor- cor- corporate income with part-time hours and having the freedom to be with my family and travel, I've really made it my obsession to get this information out there and get it out to you because success is a science. It's not hit or miss. And those who make it, they do follow um, certain principles, and and I want to share what those are with you. So uh, I believe all three of them t- will take you less than two hours to go through, and um, and you can go and register for that at deliveryourgenius.com. And if you'd like to send me an email directly, you can do that at Christina with a C-H, so C-H-R-I-S-T-I-N-A at deliveryourgenius.com. And I would be more than happy to connect with you and, um, and to help you uncover what blocks might be in your way and to really help you uncover what your unique genius is. So thank you, Lucy. Absolutely, absolutely. That is so fabulous. Is there anything else that you would like our, to leave with our audience? 
Um, I think the one thing is kind of going back to that initial question that you were having about my favorite phrase, and I'd just love to leave people with that, is, is just saying, love what you do, get paid what you're worth, and still have time for the rest of your life. That's so incredible. That's so incredible. Thank you so kindly for being on the Wealthy Wednesday radio show. It has been such an honor and a pleasure, and I personally am going to be signing up for for the, the free gift, too, because that is such important information that really needs to be out there for the world, and I will definitely let all of my fans know about it, so thank you. Thanks, Lucy. It's been my pleasure being here. Thank you for having me today. All right. Well, until next time, we will talk to you next week. Thanks for listening to the Wealthy Wednesday Radio Show with Lucy McMonagle. That's on every Wednesday. Join us next time for more inspiration and empowerment from various topics and expert guests. To personally contact Lucy McMonagle, visit L-U-C-I-M-C-M-O-N-A-G-L-E dot com. That's LucyMcMonagle.com. Until next time, many blessings.